Hey there, Broniacs. Welcome back to Bronze Over Brains. I'm your man, Bronson Layton, of course, and guys, we sure have picked a good day to do a vlog because, as you can see, it is currently snowing where I live, and um, we don't get many days like this, not as much as I can remember. Yeah, I figure today might be a good day to discuss some things with you that I think would be appropriate for the occasion. Even though it isn't about snow or winter, it does go with the theme of snow. It's about beauty, it's about tranquility, and it's all about acceptance. We gotta accept the cold temperatures. And with the subject of today's video, as the rest of the theme of my channel, it's all about acceptance. So bundle up, grab a seat, and let's grab a cup of hot cocoa and start this vlog. For starters, let's take a look at the snow that's on my front windshield here. It's so great to look at snow up close. I mean, don't you just wanna grab a hold of it? And oh my gosh, that's ice cold. <sighs> Well, now that I got my hand dunked in hot water and made myself a hot cup of coffee, I think it's time we can get down to the serious part of the video. Even though Valentine's Day has passed, I have thought about doing this video for quite some time. Have you ever wondered what it was like to think differently than most people and yet Deep down inside, you craved so much love that everybody else shares with each other, like a romantic relationship, and yet you wanted that, but you didn't feel like it would be possible. Well, look no further, because that is what this video is here for. So, Broniacs, in short, today's video is about autism and the world of dating. To begin this discussion, I would like to draw forth um, my own experience with dating. Uh, from my experience, I have only had one true girlfriend. The one that you all know, uh, Savannah, if you're watching this video, I love you and I hope you enjoyed your Valentine's gift. Um, Savannah started dating uh, back in 2016 and um, that was actually when I had the courage to ask her out. Before then, like early on in my teenage years and when I was little, I didn't truly understand what romance was all about. I knew what it was about, but I didn't know how to apply myself into the situation, if that makes sense. I didn't know how to talk to a girl, like connect into her perspective. I did, however, you know, think about a girl's interests, uh, how to engage in conversation, uh, try to bond. But I, until I started dating Savannah, I didn't really know what it was like to be romantically involved. But after my experience since 2016, I have learned a thing or two about dating. And since I'm an autistic, I can talk about this both ways. To all the men out there who are watching this, um, I can give you a few pointers. When it comes to a romantic partner, uh, the goal is to not be self-absorbed, but be confident. A romantic partner is always encouraging the idea of confidence. And even if you have shaky confidence, that's okay too. That shows you have a sensitive side. Sensitivity isn't necessarily a bad thing, at least not from my perspective. I mean, there are a lot of sensitive guys out there who have made the best of relationships. Sometimes um, it might have been a different story, but you should always be willing to put yourself into your partner's shoes. 
uh, see what they're interested in, see what they like, see what they like to eat, uh, their favorite music, games, uh, hobbies, wherever they would like to go to have fun, that sort of thing. I think it's safe to say that on our end, guys, it is, it's a complicated situation with romance because I don't know who follows the philosophy of men holding back their emotions and not be open, but I think it's safe to say that there's no shame in sharing your emotions. That takes more strength than holding them back, believe it or not. And to you ladies out there, uh, this is going to be a bit awkward on my end for this part of the video, but what I can tell you is that uh, guys in general, we are always open to discuss things with you, no matter how uh, tight-minded we are, no matter how tough we can be. Suffice it to say that it takes both partners' effort to really communicate, and guys are more capable of communicating, when it, especially when it comes to dating. Um, on the autistic part, um, the cases may vary. Um, autistic guys could be nonverbal. They may not communicate mouth to mouth as much with you, but that doesn't mean they're trying to be stubborn. That's just their perspective, uh, that they could be processing so much in their heads right now that they, it could take a while for them to come up with one response. And even for high functioning, um, autistics, we could, on the other hand, talk so much that it may come across as self-conceited, but usually that's not the case. We just love to talk, and we are always open to listen as much as we talk. If you ladies would like a guy who is, like, caring and giving, always be open to what he has to say, and he will totally do the same for you. And you may be surprised with what he could do to surprise you every day. He could bring you flowers every day. He could bring a collection of his own works every day. Whatever he does, whatever he says, like the rest of us, autistic guys have a heart as much as you ladies have your hearts. Like I said, it just takes effort to communicate. But don't just take my word for it. I have with me on uh, today's video a couple of guests who would like to give a woman's perspective on dating and on the spectrum. These two ladies have kindly agreed to be on today's show, and I hope you all join me in a round of applause for welcoming them onto Bronze Over Brains. So I'm gonna let these two ladies take it away with their introduction, and I hope you enjoy their contribution. Hello, world. My name is Layla, I'm 19 years old, I'm from the state of Georgia, and I have a form of autism known as Asperger's. Throughout childhood, I wasn't very social, I didn't have many friends besides like my stuffed animals and I was super duper shy. I've always been hugely interested in reading, science, technology, animals, pretty much anything that is considered normal nerd stuff, including like video games and stuff like that as well. When I was little, for a, quite a few years, I went to a private school and I was often made fun of by other young girls my age that were into more of the standard girl things that weren't considered tomboyish, I guess you could say. Um, of course, my grandparents and my mother were the people who raised me, and they taught me to not be like everybody else, just to be me, and if everyone wants to make fun of me, well then that's their fault. They're just jealous. That's pretty much exactly what I've grown into. Just, you know, I'm me. I'm not anybody else. 
And throughout my early teens, I became super, super insecure in myself. All I was interested in was art, and I hoped that, you know, at some point, maybe in, you know, many years in the future, I would actually be able to be social, but I just wasn't social. I didn't have a job, I didn't have a car or anything like that, and I didn't really have anyone to hang out with, so I didn't really have much of anything to do besides draw. And of course, drawing was always how I handled any kind of problems that were going on in my life. Then, I believe my life turned around when I met a very good friend here named Pixel. Pixel is a vintage robotic dog companion from Japan, so of course she was something that not many people around here have ever seen before. And after I got Pixel, I didn't really feel alone anymore. I felt like I had Despite the fact that she was, you know, pretty much a material object, I had someone or something that I could share adventures with. So after I got Pixel, I was inspired to get my own car. Um, I got my first job, and of course, fourth through twelfth grade, I was homeschooled, and I finally graduated in 2020. And in 2019, I got a boyfriend, and his name is Kevin and you'll meet him closer towards the end of this video. And by now I'm on technically my second job. My first job was at a library headquarters in my hometown. I was eventually transferred over to another library in my hometown, which is much bigger and has a lot more daily patrons and everything. And when I first started at my first job, I was still very shy, very antisocial. I didn't really know how to communicate with people and it was kind of hindering my work performance in a way. But throughout the past two or three years um, of working in the library system and of bringing Pixel to work with me almost every single consecutive day besides days when it was raining of course, um, and showing her to patrons and making friends with people that I had never spoken to before and never even thought I would speak to before, wouldn't believe it but I do feel like my life has turned around. Hi guys! I'm April. I'm actually from uh, a small town in New Jersey called Phillipsburg. It's like right on the border of Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Um, I was diagnosed with autism at the age of 14. And it took a lot for me to be diagnosed. Um, if I did not battle depression, I would not have been diagnosed because nobody knew. One thing about myself is that I am a singer, songwriter, and musician, and I know 14 languages. Wow. <laughs> Those are amazing introductions. It is such a great honor for you two to be on here for today. I can't wait to see how you guys respond to these questions that I have coming up. I would first like to ask you ladies, in your opinions, what do women on the spectrum look for in a romantic partner? I believe something that anybody on the spectrum would expect in a partner is someone who is willing to love you for how you are and doesn't want you to, you know, doesn't ask for you to change and doesn't try to tell you that you should be able to do things that you can't or that you know, you're weird or anything like that. I mean, my boyfriend Kevin is a lot like me. Me and him have the same interest and he totally understands me and he doesn't try to change me. He just loves me for who I am. So in my opinion, what autistic women look for in a romantic partner, um, obviously it depends on the person. It depends on like what they're attracted to, but especially in my case, um, I look for someone who really, really understands me and takes the time to and is patient when I'm having like a bad day with my sensory issues and everything that goes along with having autism. And, you know, that can go a long way because a lot of people like us don't feel accepted or understood. Yeah, that's what I think. Um, autistic women such as myself look for in a romantic partner. Wow. That is some excellent advice right there. And that's a brilliant perspective, by the way. Um, 
Uh, going on, I do have another question. What are the challenges that autistic women face when it comes to dating? I think one of the biggest challenges that autistic women face when it comes to dating is probably just honestly the shyness. I mean, building up the confidence to talk to somebody was one of the most difficult things with me. I mean, I had tried talking to guys in person before and it just wasn't working out for me because, I don't know, I was just awkward and none of them really clicked with me. None of them were anybody that had the same interest as me or that truly understood me for who I was. And of course, with my boyfriend, I did meet him on the internet and he was pretty much the only person that had ever fully clicked with me when it came to dating or relationship kind of thing. So the challenges that autistic women face when it comes to dating is one, definitely um, being misinterpreted as being shy or standoffish, um, as well as being blunt because we all know that autistic people, regardless of where you are on the spectrum, um, we do not have a filter. So that's one thing. Um, another thing that autistic women face, especially women, um, is that we are seen more as vulnerable if we do have an autism diagnosis and struggle socially. Uh, we actually get taken advantage of quite a lot and it makes things really, really difficult. Um, another thing that women on the autism spectrum are actually, uh, challenged with in a relationship of any kind is trust. Um, a lot of times women on the spectrum struggle with that because we have to mask how we are. A lot of people see us and, you know, we look fine, but in actuality, they do not know the struggles that women on the autism spectrum have to face. They see when we have to mask because of, you know, wanting to make friends, wanting to get out there. A lot of people see that as, oh, if you have autism, you're definitely faking it. That's not the case. And that's why it's so hard for women to trust their romantic partners when they're on the spectrum in a relationship. So those are some of the struggles that especially women have to face. And uh, do either of you have some advice for women who are looking for a relationship? A piece of advice that I would give to any woman on the spectrum who is looking for a partner is that don't try to change yourself and don't try to step too far out of your comfort zone just to be with somebody that in the long run isn't going to agree with you or isn't going to... Yes, this is my chihuahua, sweet pea. But don't try to be with someone who is going to try to change you or push you to do things that you're not comfortable with. And don't try to settle for someone that you know you don't want to be with. Always strive to be with someone who makes you happy and who has the same kind of spirit as you and maybe even some of the same interests because one thing I know for sure us people on the spectrum, our interests are a major thing to us. And the things that matter the most are the things that make us happy in the long run. And if you don't feel happy or comfortable around a guy, then he's probably not the guy for you. So the best piece of advice that I could give to women who are looking for a relationship that are, especially that are on the spectrum or have chronic illnesses like myself, um, one of the things that I always say is don't be afraid to show who you are because, you know, if you hide a part of yourself and you end up in a relationship because of it and then when you show your full self, the other person gets, you know, standoffish or becomes more confrontational, that takes a toll on you mentally, especially even in any position, especially for women, because 
a lot of us have to go through, especially people who are vulnerable, we have to go through things like mental, emotional abuse. There are times where we have physical, there are times where we even get sexually abused because of being vulnerable. So don't be afraid to show who you are to the full extent. Um, don't be afraid to tell your partner how you're feeling. Because, you know, a lot of relationships are established on trust. And if you don't tell your partner exactly how you're feeling or if you're uncomfortable with something, the trust goes out the window. Uh, my favorite motivational speaker, Darmon, actually says in his videos, if you don't have trust, you don't have anything. That is always one of the things that is really big in a relationship. You have to trust the other person. And it needs to be reciprocated too. And the last piece of advice that I would want to give is don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. Like I said, a lot of us women who are vulnerable, we have to go through a lot of abuse. And sometimes it takes a lot for us to stand up and finally, you know, prove that, yeah, we are strong and we're not going to be taken advantage of. Sometimes it takes a lot, but you need to be able to in order to get yourself out of a toxic situation. It would be the best thing. Physically, mentally, emotionally, any way. Just stand up for yourself. And when I say that, I'm not meaning like, you know, physically hurt the other person. No. I'm meaning speak up. You gotta speak up and if something's like uncomfortable on your end, you gotta voice that. Otherwise, they'll just take advantage of you. So that would be my best piece of advice for women. Do you have any advice for guys who are looking for a relationship? Advice that I would give to guys, whether they be on the spectrum or not. Don't try to change a girl. Don't try to tell her what to do. If she can't tie her shoelaces, then just help her with it. Don't question it. Or if she wants to carry around her robotic dog everywhere she goes, don't be embarrassed by it. Just embrace it. Because that's just how she is, and that's just how I am. And honestly, that doesn't have to change. So, for men, what I would say as far as advice is along the same lines as what I said for women. Don't be afraid to express who you are. Don't be afraid to stand up for yourself when it comes to how you're feeling. If something is uncomfortable for you, you are allowed to speak up. Time and time again, I see people say that men aren't allowed to show emotion. They're not allowed to voice what they're going through mentally. There's always a huge mental health crisis when it comes to men and a lot of people, a lot of people don't understand it because you know, they say that any man who cries isn't manly. Well, that's not the case. Men, take this from someone who deals with mental health on a daily basis. You are allowed to express who you are. It's okay to cry if something is upsetting you. It is okay for you to voice your feelings. You gotta trust that your partner will understand that and that they won't hurt you. If someone doesn't see that, even if you have a crush on them, if that person does not see your worth and does not see that you are allowed to be emotional, they're not for you. They're not the right person. Men, you're not Spock. It is all right for you to be strong, but it is also all right for you to be emotional. You know, 
You don't have to go through life stoic. Just be proud of who you are, regardless of the outcome. Because, trust me, if you open up, it's not only going to save you, it's going to have an impact on the guys around you. They may tease you a little bit, and if they do, they're not friends. But they'll also see that, yeah, it's okay for you to be like that. So that's what I have to say as far as any advice that I would give men. Thank you both so much for all your answers. They are magnificent perspectives, and I couldn't have thought of better answers myself because that's why... I have you two on here and it's great to have like diverse perspectives and opinions and experiences. They're all just amazing. And uh, this last question, uh, and this is optional, of course, would you like to share with us uh, your experience with dating? So, more about my boyfriend, Kevin. Me and him met in 2017 on a robotics group, actually, online. Um, and we realized that we shared not only robotics, but a lot of other interests as well. And, you know, we've been together ever since. We've been in a relationship and everything. And we actually met up for the first time in 2019. And, you know, in real life. And Kevin is now living here with me. And... Me and him have a lot of things in common, and the good thing about him is that he doesn't try to change me, he doesn't try to conform me into, you know, a different kind of person than I am. He just loves me for how I am, and he's willing to accept that and to help me and to make sure that I always stay secure of myself. And together, me and him do robotics demonstrations. I used to personally do them in schools, actually, before the whole COVID situation. Um, but now me and him still do them in the mall and sometimes, you know, just random places. And we built together a Facebook group called Lots of Bots, which is a robotics group for people of any age, of, you know, anything, like literally whatever. Just as long as you like robotics, you can join. We built the group almost two years ago, as of pretty much next month, it'll be two years ago. And today we have around 600 members now, active members. And here's my boyfriend, Kevin. Hi. <laughs> Kev. Yes. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> so, opening up about what I go through as far as dating um, is a little complicated. I have been in several relationships not not at the same time obviously but I've been in several relationships since I was 11 and in a lot of them I was abused a lot of them I was mentally and emotionally abused I was manipulated um all of them were toxic up until I met someone really special that person and I we're both on the spectrum. When we met, I knew that I could trust this guy because I was able to open up to him. I was able to, you know, not be afraid to show who I am. He's able to help me when I'm dealing with medical stuff, which a lot of people do not have the patience to deal with, especially with me. And... You know, he always goes out of his way to make sure that I am alright. To me, I've been hurt a lot. I still have a lot of trust issues from past relationships. I flinch easily because of a couple of them where I was physically abused. But the person I'm with now always knows how to calm me down in those hyper-vigilant states. They always know how to help me when I'm really struggling. And you know, they always make sure that everything's gonna be all right. So I wanna conclude this, well, at least my portion of the interview, with something that I think a lot of people do not understand. 
regardless of if you're male or female, there are going to be times where you may feel like you're being taken advantage of. A lot of people do not understand that we have to mask how we are because of fear of that. Women, from an emotional standpoint, men also, from that same standpoint, we have to mask how we act, how we behave. We have to act how we have to mask how we feel in order to prevent ridicule, judgment, or being taken advantage of. But it is okay to show who we are. It is okay for us to have a voice. Anyone who does not allow that is someone you shouldn't be with. So, with something to think about, this is April Goodbreak. Make it a great day, or not, the choice is yours. Layla and April, I really appreciate your answers for this video and for giving us your perspectives on dating. Dating in itself, even if you're not autistic, it is complicated in every sense of the word. We are all out there every day trying to find that one person who will love us in the one way that nobody else can. But love comes in many forms other than romance. Love comes, uh, as a matter of fact, I have love for all of you right there, the supporters of our channel and our cause. And with that in mind, I want to say thank you to all of our viewers who tuned into today's video. As always, this could not be done without you. And I'm going to close it here for today. Um, if you want to see more content, please subscribe to us here on YouTube at Bronze Over Brains. That's the name of our channel. Uh, follow us on social media. We have a Facebook fan page with the same name, Bronze Over Brains, uh, Instagram, The Savage One Twenty One, uh, and also follow us on Twitter, uh, Bronson Layton, Bronze Over Brains. Either one of those on Twitter. And one more time, please join me in thanking these two wonderful people who have shared their contributions to today's video. It is completely appreciated and I speak for all of us when I say happy late Valentine's Day. <laughs> so until next time Broniacs, this is Bronze Over Brains. I'm Bronson Layton, always reminding you to stay brawny. See you guys later. Ooh, I caught a snowflake. <laughs>